We've been friends with the good folks from Keltec for some time now. Founded by brilliant designer George Kelgren, Keltec CNC Inc. is an American company that employs over 200 people in Florida and has been manufacturing innovative firearms since 1995. As the whole world knows, we've got quite a few of their innovative guns in our collection at the Hank Strain situation. One thing we've been wanting to do for a while though, was tour the factory in Coco and show you guys the human side of a company that is much admired and yet still very much misunderstood in our gun culture. While out at SHOT Show this year, and with the help of our friend and tour guide, Chad, Lola and I finally got approval to bring our cameras onto the factory floor. This is a big first since video cameras have never been allowed behind the scenes before. Our hope is to demystify, enlighten, and illustrate why we see the folks at Caltech as family and why we buy their gun. Hanging out with Chad from Caltech. Sure you recognize the salt and pepper tactical beard that he's got going. <laughs> Chad's actually gonna give us a tour of the factory over here at Caltech, so let's just do you want to say anything before we jump into the tour, Chad? No, no let's do it. I'll save my voice for all this stuff. Okay. See. Yeah. yeah. If we see anything top secret, you might never see us again. <laughs> all right. Okay. This is Sean. This is our customer service department, by the way. That's Sean doing his thing. That's Doug. He's <laughs> he's my favorite tech. Yeah. Besides yeah. Andrew. That's Nick eating his lunch. And you got Tim here. He's, He's on a call. To work on this. On this and, yeah. off of the and this is Sharon. Sharon uh, handles all of our incoming. You know, when we talk about like um, people say, why don't you guys, right. you know, buy a building? Why don't you expand? This is our newest building, and as you can see, it's huge. Okay, and, so what uh, are you um, planning on doing with well, this so building, far, or is it? This is your raw materials or something? Right, yeah. Most okay. of our raw materials come in through here. Um, they also come into that building there. Okay. Which we'll go through that too. But um, I'll walk you through here real quick and you can kind of just yeah. look around. Okay. But, um, so everything in the production will start off here as raw materials, Yeah, right? all the trucks come in here. They drop off all the rods. That's our saw station there where we cut uh, all the barrels and mm -hmm. other whatever parts. So, and they cut other stuff over here too. But So this would be the raw barrel stock as it comes in. Yeah, it looks like it might be KSG barrels. KSG barrels? Don't quote me on that. I have no okay. idea. <laughs> some sort of barrels, and then yeah. it gets chopped up over here, right? Because I see some of cut, some yeah. things here cut down to length and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So these are those would be sub two thousand barrels there. Sub two thousand. Okay. I think. You want to come around this way? Yeah. Lots of them. But this is all um, mags. These are all magazines. Oh, these are magazines? Guns. Yeah, this whole okay. wall is nothing but magazines. I think. Okay. And then uh, this side's boxes, that side's magazines. So someone else makes the magazines for you guys, right? Well, um, yeah. We have some, like the SU-16 magazines wanna... are uh, molded. Um, so yeah, we have a company that molds those for us with our name on it and everything. And then okay. all of our handgun minus the PMR-30. Um, Metgar. We get our Metgar, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's industry standard. Okay, so. so that comes in, and I think those Metgars are made where, in Italy, Italy or something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. The only thing at the company that's not American made. <laughs> but it's so. Italian. Yeah. This is just somebody's workstation, I don't know what that is. But. And as you see, Chad always walks around. Everyone here, well not everyone, but ev most people here walk around armed, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of us yeah. aren't. Well, most people aren't as obvious as I am with it. I mean, oh, okay. I like to carry a rifle around. Not all okay. the time. I mean, I don't walk around all day with a rifle, yeah. but we're always armed. Yeah. Chad's always ready for action. If anything pops off right now, zombies decide to attack right now at this minute and go walking <laughs> dead on us, we got Chad. You might be better off just running. If something's broken, Nick's the guy that fixes it. Not firearms related, but... Oh. You know, maintenance related. Machinery I mean, the, the whole, stuff. I'll put it to you this way, the whole place would fall down if you weren't here. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he's the man. <laughs> he's working on it. So he um, could pretty much fix anything. Pretty much, yeah. Well, we're just, we're, what we're doing is like a lot of people think that Caltech is just a little kitchen somewhere. <laughs> right. Someone's kitchen that, that yeah. you guys are putting these things together, but this is just your warehouse. Yeah, and stay tuned because this is a warehouse. There's not a whole lot of excitement here. We'll get to the exciting stuff here in just a little bit. Right. Yeah. yeah we're, right now we're making our way over to the finishing room where we do all the bluing and parkerizing and all that stuff. Okay, That's cool. just the sandblasting room. Sandblasting? Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is our um, 
my bluing room. Um, this is all relatively new. Um, our engineer, Ryan Williams, uh, he's completely redone the whole system here to make it much more efficient. Um, the bluing and the parkerizing on our guns now, our uh, finishes just look so much better now. Okay. And this, this particular room um, was a little bit of a bottleneck, but he straightened that out so we don't have a bottleneck anymore here or any other building for that matter. Okay. So everything is just kind of flowing, and that's why things are starting to come out a lot faster now. So here's, here's the raw. And then this is once the bluing is done. Okay, so these are the guys who do all the bluing. You got a bunch of stuff here, I see. These yeah. look like uh, either, what are these, P3 AT? P11. P11. Yeah. I know, exciting stuff, right? <laughs> hey, it's exciting to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is where all the magic happens. Yeah. KSGs. Yeah. And these will all be sent to sub-assembly today, where they'll get um, their selector switch assemblies. Um, probably the, oh yeah, the followers and springs, and then the two plugs. So do you know the numbers? How many guns are you making every day? Do you know? These will all be built probably today, um, but I think KSGs daily are probably 200, pushing 200 now. 200 a day, yeah, okay. How many people here in the factory? About 200, two something? Uh, I think we're at like 220 or 230. 220, like okay. Maybe 260. We might have 300 people, I don't know. Nuke builds the racks, mm -hmm. and then uh, or assembles the racks, and then that's what they put the guns on to transport over building to building. Right, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. This is called Brevard Robotics. North. We're gonna go to Brevard Robotics Middle Hi. <laughs> next. And then there's so a, basically all these stop. buildings are connected, and you guys can just walk. Or I've seen some uh, golf carts. Yeah. Just yeah. Golf lots cart of golf route. carts. Around. Uh, this is our R and D department here. R and D is, is in this. It's in this container. Yeah. And this is where George is now. Probably coming up with some crazy. Are you serious? Uh, He's in there. Yeah. Uh, my friend Carl. He does all the R and D. Okay. Builds like uh, George comes up at the parts and, oh, and okay. he and a, another guy Lyle uh -huh. they kind of put everything together and then he actually runs the numbers and builds mm -hmm. the actual parts. Oh, so okay, the, cool, cool. So this is the CNC machines right here, right? Right. Yeah. You may recognize him from Shot Show. I'm gonna be from Shot Show. Yeah, how you know, a man. vlog or something, right? Yeah. Uh, YouTube page. YouTube. Yeah, he's got there the you go. You did it. Yeah. What are you running today? I'm making a uh, pocket. They're gonna oh, suck okay. it for uh, picking off the barrel nuts. They're gonna do a different design on the barrel nuts for the shotgun. Oh, we are? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're gonna make it like uh, across the board, all of them the same. RFB, KSG. Oh, cool. All the barrel nuts the same. Yeah, right. One tool fits everything. Nice. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, drop material. These are from, these are drops of steel from the uh, KSG barrel extensions, and I make a tool out of it. Oh, wow. Your socket. So now, is the uh, customer going to wind up getting one of those tools? Or it's it's an armorer's tool. It's an armorer's tool. Okay. Yeah. So will it be available or no? Oh, Not yeah, yeah. Oh, it will be. Okay. We already have them available. Oh, yeah, we have them available. Uh, I guess we're doing it. Say we're doing a new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, this yeah. is this is just prototype. Oh, cool. All right, because then because they're all going to be universal now. Yeah. yeah so so you get this sure one tool, good. you can take everything down. Everything. R F P K S G. Oh, that's nice. And he's got his guns, guns and, and coffee. coffee. Okay, look here. It's a it's a Picatinny rail for a K S G. For a K S G. Right. So these these three stations are going to do all the top. These three stations are going to do the bottoms, and they've already run the top. Mm -hmm. So you turn them over and you clock them. Small hole to the front, see the distance? Mm -hmm. Long distance to the back. So it's gonna run right now. Ready? Here we go. It's gonna do, do a half inch end mill. It's gonna clock by qualifying the ends. So we're gonna find zero on the ends. Okay, so it's looking for that hole that you were showing us. Well, it, I, it, I the machine know. knows where it is. Oh, okay. Because once they set it up, I have to find out where center is on each part. They have to find out the overall length and the starting point. They used to be the blue room. Oh, you're switching everything around. So they moved the blue room to the to the far end of the new building. Uh huh. And they they prep the new end. You know they, they go on to the building. They put new machines in. They prep the floor. They had to get air. They bought new compressors. Um, 
12, 12 new machines total is what's going in. Okay. There's four four there, two here, and six more coming in. Okay, so we're, we're getting to see Caltech go through a sea change right now. It's strong. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not slowing down. Yeah, so this that's pretty this, cool. This building is getting divided. There's a wall going up right over here. Mm -hmm. Those containers are coming out. There's, there's uh, uh, two rooms going up down there. George, apparently George is going to yeah. finally give himself like a real work. actual, yeah, yeah an good. actual lab. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking he had like an underground bunker, He's brilliant. you know, and there was like a lot of stainless steel and stuff like that. <laughs> He's man. brilliant. He really is brilliant. Yeah, he is, man. I'm a big fan. I mean, I, I, I pretty much work with him on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. He's, uh, he's very quick. Like, I get all these drawings of this thing, yeah. right? I, get, I just get, they'll come in in the morning, they'll give me a, a thumb drive, and I need this, this, and this, and his drawings are perfect. There's no flaws in them. The thing about it is, in six and a half years, I've only found one mistake. Only one. Wow. Six and a half years. Okay. And all it was was the size of a battery. There were okay. no mistakes on the drawings at all. Right. And he's, every time you save a drawing, it time stamps it. So mm -hmm. I can tell that it's after dinner, he goes home and works more. He, yeah. he is always so how on. how much sleep does he get? He never sleeps nor slumbers. No. We'll just uh, buzz past the welding area here real quick. So these are, uh, these are KSG assemblies. And uh, what they're doing is putting the, uh, they're welding the tubes together along with the receivers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, once that assembly is put together, um, that's when they go ahead and they, move, they uh, install the barrels and stuff. Oh, okay. And that's that's the, the solid assemblies you saw over there with the receiver and the barrel. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. Then it goes down there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So. This is heat treating. One of, our, uh, one of our guys doing some heat treating, you know, making all those. Also, KSG. Yeah. So there's tons, there's tons of KSGs coming out of Caltech. They're, they're everywhere. All over the place. These are all, what, these are KSGs? Yep. These are barrels? Yep. Yeah, so you got, these are the barrels, yeah. and then you have the sub-assemblies. We just saw those guys welding together, yeah. and these are already finished. So they're ready to have the barrels put in, and then have a whole gun assembly. So. Hey James, do you mind uh, Hank Strange coming in with the camera? Oh. Okay. Hop on in there, you'll recognize James. Hey, how are you folks today? Hey guys. How are you guys doing? This is James. You've seen him at a shot show a time or two. And uh, he's got the guys here building some KSGs. Putting them together. Doing all the fine tune work on the uh, finish, it looks like, right now. A little bit of touch ups here and there. Yeah. And this is where they uh, put all the, they get all these sub assemblies ready to go for final assembly, which we'll see later on. Oh, okay. Over there, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Non-stop cranking them out. Thanks, James. Yes, yes sir. Uh, everyone thinks it's just you building these guns, Chad. We gotta stop that. Well, it everyone really is. It's just Chad over here building guns. That's exactly what's happening. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I just hired all these guys to come in and act like they knew what they were doing for a minute. <laughs> no, Chad's not building anything. So while we're out here in the parking lot, what kind of car are you driving, man? Uh, it's over there. It's um. What are you driving? It's a Ferrari F40. F40. Yeah. Really? No, nice. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is our main machine shop. Um, mm. This is where uh, just about everything we build is built right here. Oh, okay. And like Carl was saying, they do some stuff in this building right now, but again, they're expanding that. They're going to put a divider this, in all that stuff. But this is our this is our original and main. Machine shop is where all the matters been happening since the 90s. Oh, okay. So this um, is a lot bigger than a kitchen. Yeah, it is a little bit bigger than a kitchen. So uh, we'll walk you through. Yeah. So you guys can, uh, so these are all CNC machines. Here. All of them. Oh, yeah. okay. Wow. How many yeah. CNC yeah. machines do you guys have? I don't know. Oh, okay. We can count them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, that'll, that'll, you know, that'll be a good thing. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And, and these things are running 24/7, by the way. It never stops in here. How's it going? So you can get a look inside the machine right there. You're doing good work here. Yeah, we're trying. Building my future Caltech. Yeah. <laughs> good. Hey, how are you doing, Jordan? I don't know if you remember me from Shot Show. I was harassing you in Shot Show and you called security. Do you remember that? <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you forgot that, huh? 
Oh, okay, you are. Yeah, we're good. He's not up the street. No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah. I took one of my favorite pictures from Shot Show with you and the RDB. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, that kind of made me famous. <laughs> you know, I tell everyone it's like you know I'm I'm hanging out with George and the gun at yeah, the same yeah. time. So <laughs> good to see you here. How's it going today? Good. Anything new today? No new guns. Oh my god. No, I did think up with some really good ideas. We probably just don't know the time. Yeah. Okay. It's all top secret. Uh, we have to make. Here. Oh, we're not going to stop here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, everyone, there's a, there's a huge mystique about Caltech and how the guns get made. I'm telling Chad that everyone thinks they're getting made in a kitchen somewhere. <laughs> you know? well, no. Yeah, but people really believe that, so we're going to try to demystify that. Yeah. So, we're we'll cool. introducing some of the crazy people here. Yeah. Okay, it's a great meeting you, George. Pleasure. Thanks, Nick, he's, uh, he's one of the shooting team guys as well. Oh, okay, you're in the shooting. What's yeah. your shooting team called? The Caltech shooting team. <laughs> okay, wow, yeah. that's original. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Looks like Nick's doing. Uh, what are you, what are you working on? P32 slide. 32. Oh, okay. Let's start talking right Oh, this is the slide. Okay, so yeah. here you go. Here's the solid steel, right? Yep. 4140. 4140. And then this is the first operation. Wow. Okay, so it goes from this to this. Yep. Then okay. Second operation. Oh does wow. It does the top of it. The okay, bottom, top. top. Okay. And then the 30 degrees. Oh wow. So is this complete? That's complete. It just needs to um, get tumbled and then glued or parkerized, and it's oh, done. Very nice. Yeah. So you lose a lot of weight. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because all three of these probably don't weigh as much as this thing, and then this is really... Yeah, probably not. Yeah, okay. Wow, I see the difference, just picking it up. Okay, cool. How many CNC machines are in here, man? Do you know? We added, like, we just got, like, six more. And yeah. Two. I'm not sure. So probably several hundred, right? Is no, it that no, much? no, no, not, not at all. Less not than a hundred? I think. We probably just count. It's only this building, and then in our back, the back of the okay. shop, we've got a robotic welder. So what? It's like 50 or something. Something right? like that. Yeah, yeah, something yeah right 50. Here. Okay, cool. Nice. And then every machine is doing like a different, uh, different task. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, man. Some some machines get set up for different, like multiple things, don't they? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like um, this machine also does uh, PF9 slides and oh, 380 good. slides. Oh, okay. Uh, that machine does um, multiple shotgun parts. Oh, okay. That machine does um, PMR 30 parts and shotgun parts. Oh, cool. They're okay. all, yeah, every machine. Yeah. They, we do all kinds. All right, where are we going now? Let's go see Mike. We're going through here? Okay. Mark, how you doing, man? What are you cutting out in there? Um, P11 extractor. P11 extractor. Oh, extractor. Yeah, this part right here. Okay. So that's what's getting cut out. The extractor from P. Can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> that's all. No, where no, is, I, you know what I want to know? Where is that big sign? Is it here? What big sign? You know what big sign? Oh, it's your, where your head is like I 150 it. feet. No, you didn't burn it. No. <laughs> so we're doing the tour, and uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm doing it as as well as you can. The tour, I'm this sure is from a KSG. Yes, sir. See good that? eye, good eye. What's Man. it called? When I'm good, I'm good. What is it? Um, this looks like it goes on the. It's an end cap. Close. Right. It's called muzzle plate. Muzzle plate. Yeah. Yeah, that I didn't know. Match grade, right? Match grade. So they, they yeah, kind of start like that, I guess. Yeah. So it goes from that to that. That's what Mike's making today. So that's, that's what, what I'm making today. Keeping the KSG's rolling off the line, you know? Right, so what is this machine? Obviously, it's some kind of CNC machine. It's right? a vertical milling machine. Vertical milling, okay. Yeah, and it has a bed on it right now. Uh, and the bed actually moves. 
Oh, the bed is moving yeah. around. Okay. And if we have a program in there and it just repeats itself. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see through there because all the fish go through there, but uh, it's got to be there. Uh, we are ramping up production this year, especially on the Caltech shotgun, on the CMR, on the CMR that's going to be coming out later this year, um, and the RDB, and also the Sub 2000. That's what the public wants, and that's what we're trying to get. Them. So, what's your dirty, your daily turnaround? I mean, is there like each day we must complete X amount? It's, it, we do have goals. We do have um, goals set for the week of guns that we do want to get out the door. I uh, average up 3,000 as it stands right now, but we're really upping that up to uh, the KSG is once to get out to 1,500 a week. Uh, sub 2,000, like I said, that's going to be boosted and also the PMR. But uh, we make all the guns at one time. We don't like one gun for one week, another gun for the other week. Everything, the whole, everything's in production, so all our products. Yep. So with, with the transition that's happened, that's going to help a lot of the production and getting things out on the market faster and quicker, right? Absolutely. In the back, we are expanding, getting more machines, 12 more machines in. Uh, and we're expanding another two buildings over, as you saw earlier. But um, yeah, we're just really trying to uh, really trying to put it out there, and it takes a lot of time, takes a lot of money, and a lot of manpower. But uh, we're doing the best we can with what we have. They got to be George. Nice. Pretty, pretty rare, nice man, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Very he rare. seems a lot more relaxed here. When he's at work. Yeah. yeah. When he's working, he's, he seems he's... younger. Yeah. <laughs> well, this isn't work for him. This is a passion. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, he comes to work at eight o'clock in the morning. I takes lunch from 12 to 12.30 like the rest of us do uh, and comes back and works till 4 and goes home like yeah. the rest of us. And and le leadership, working. absolutely. Yeah. If, yeah. if you want to call it work, like I think it's just it's absolute passion for him yeah. and it, it, it's life's enjoyment. But you guys are cool too for like sticking in with a, you know, with a company because I'm sure you guys do a lot of that stuff as well that you just throw in your whole bunch of time and effort. I know you do. Yeah. I'm absolutely, sure do. I'm all in. All in. Either, either you're all in around here or you're out. I mean, yeah. we're such a big family, you know, here and everybody gets along. As, you know, as I do towards myself, uh, people, uh, I always get uh, some kickback on the tours and how happy everybody is. Everybody's smiling. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. It's really awesome. So it's a great work environment. You know, so. That's the big thing I want to do with this video is I want to humanize you guys because a lot of people, you're not human to a lot of people. Correct. Yeah, you're not. I mean, that's what that's what makes it easy for people to just come at you sometimes because they don't realize that you guys yeah. care about all this stuff, you put a lot into it. Yeah. You know, and then when people are out there throwing their slings and arrows, we're just yeah. trying to stay safe and Yeah. Let know everything's gonna be okay. Yeah. We're doing the best we can. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's cool, man. Yeah. Oh, I'll show you the new extension. Oh, okay. So this is all brand new. They were some of the new stuff that I saw getting shipped yeah, in. Yeah, they, they staged a bunch of machines here, and then, and from here they're kind of moving them to where they're oh, going to okay. end up being to make it more. So they get most set efficient. Up, make sure they're working. And right. All that. Yeah. Okay. And they they want to find out what they're going to build on each machine, and then strategically put them in the building so that in the process it's efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So shorten the space where how, where things are moving. Right. Yeah. yeah. But eventually, this building here will also be set up with mm. with, with what we need here. Here's Danny. Cool. I don't know what Danny's working on, but you can find out. What, what's this machine here? It's a bar feeder. It feeds oh, okay. material right into the lathe. Other than this job, mostly we'll be making just small parts that it'll run continuously. Just put bars in it, and it has an arm. Swings up and catches them, and it'll drop the parts out here. Oh, okay. You won't even have to open the door except when you have to change a tool or really okay. maintain something. It's like a vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. A lot more expensive. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Put material in there, get various parts in the bucket. Right. That's the idea. Nice. Sounds nice. easy, it isn't always. Right. <laughs> That's why you still need the human element. Yeah. 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 To yeah. fix everything that goes sure. you know, wrong inevitably with any machine. You need people like him to make these things work. You know? Yeah. Hi. All right, so this is also an exclusive. I am right now, unless somebody else already did it and I don't know about it, I'm going to dub this the hen house. All right? <laughs> As you'll see, they're about to go on break. Uh oh. So we're going to go in. 
All the ladies are going to come out and they take their break. So, but we'll walk through and I'll show you around a little bit. Very nice. Okay. Cool. So this is the ISS Iron where they do uh, sub-assemblies for PMR-30s, um, KSGs, sub-2000s, SU-16, everything. <laughs> okay, basically everything. Is this the final assembly, you said, or sub-assembly? It's a sub-assembly. What does that assembly, mean? Um, like I'll show you, like this here, these are KSG butt stocks mm -hmm. that just got back to Cerakote. Okay. So they have to put all the internal parts in it and uh, put them together. Okay, and this so it's polymer Cerakoted. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this would be once it's finished here, this would be an actual sub-assembly mm -hmm. that goes over to the, the final assembly where this will go into the gun okay. and then down to test fire. And then oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is where okay. all the sub-assemblies start. Working on PMR 30s. So they get you know, the finished barrels. Remember with the finishing department? Oh, PMR yeah, 30s. Have been, yeah, these parts have all been parkerized. And then uh, Linda's doing the uh, sub-assembly, putting it all together. And this is Sister of Andrew. It is. So you know Sister. I have to get some pictures with Sister of Andrew. <laughs> just to make sure that, you know, he, he missed out. So yeah, just putting the extractor assemblies in, the firing pin assembly. Uh, puts the top cover on it, puts the barrel, the barrel block, and the buffer. And uh, they put the sights on here. Oh, okay. So yeah, this is the slides get put together here, and then they go over to final assembly, and they just get put right on the gun. Okay. That's where all the hard work happens. You're right. <laughs> You've got that right. <laughs> what is that part called? Rim support block. What's the what? Rim support block. Rim support block. Yeah. Oh, okay. I call it the blast shield. <laughs> or the the whatever protector. <laughs> Okay, it's a good thing you know the technical names. No, yeah. no, he doesn't. You, that's why you've got to know. Yeah. Yeah. When I need something PMR 30 related, this is where I come. Oh, okay, yeah. nice. We're doing KSG grip assembly. So they come in, yeah, the, this is how the plastics come into us. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they do their magic over here and, and turn it into a functioning sub assembly. Oh, okay. So. There's no end of KSGs, obviously. No. It's non-stop. Busy, busy. This. Same thing. Do one of you do rights and the other do left? Or you both do them? No, oh. we both do. We do both, both, both of them. Okay. Yeah. yeah so then both crank them out. This is, uh, looks like hammer assembly being put together? Or? Yep. Yeah. It's the third phase of hammer, hammer assembly. Nice. And then these are what they're using over there. Gotcha. Okay, so we're going a little bit backwards, but you get the idea. <laughs> hey guys. How are you? Good. What are you guys working on? Um, working SU-16. On oh, SU-16, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Trimming the plastic. Usually whatever kel -Tec is in front of me is my favorite one. <laughs> SU-16s I really do like, man. Yeah. All you RFB lovers out there, without this awesome lady, we wouldn't have an RFB. She oh, literally she literally You're keeps welcome. this gun yes. going. Yeah. I do the RFB. <laughs> yeah, the Very grip nice. assembly. I love mine. For any of you guys out there who have taken your grip assembly apart and your RFB, um, this is where it came back to have it re oh. refitted. <laughs> I'm the only one that does the inside. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one you have? Very nice, thank you. Right. <laughs> I have a 24 inch Hunter oh, model. Yeah. 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 yeah, this is what I'm doing. Very nice. Looks like Tan and 216 butt stocks going on over here. Oh, cranking those. The out. FDE XU16. Yeah. Just want to give a wave. She's the one that keeps this building Hi. going. <laughs> okay. And that's Nick back there. He's our, that's, Nick is our record with your attack. Oh, okay. I, Did yeah. I, I didn't see him in the shot show, right? No, no. Okay. You saw Nikki though. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Endorsed. And here they're doing uh, grip assemblies for, looks like... P3ATs? Yeah. 32s? Okay, so they're okay. doing some 32s. That's the part of your grip that you don't want to take apart. Mm -hmm. For those guys out there, they take their hammer blocks out. Take everything. Yeah. 
The magazine catch and spring is not. You can do that at home, but I never recommend taking out your hammer block, which happens accidentally. Listen, I always follow the instructions except for the steel case instructions. I like this color grip. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's is this the burnt Patriot? Oh, that's Patriot, Patriot Brown. Patriot Brown. And then there's you can see that up against the tan, kind of see the difference. And uh, this is the color they're working on now. Yeah, the gray. gray. Pretty cool. Yeah, very nice. This is one of my favorite places. Right? I show up here, I show up here periodically. Uh, yeah, this is the, the sub 2000 barrel sub assembly area. So this is where they uh, they take all the finished barrels. There's nothing on them. Mm -hmm. We have here, and they make all the magic. Out. This is my buddy Joe. How you doing? Good. The one brave guy that works in here. Right? <laughs> I think there's two or three now. Oh, okay. Yeah. What are you doing right now, Joe? Uh, curling, mill, drill, and pin the barrel to keep oh, okay. it stationary to keep free. Um, barrel nut from backing off. Oh, gotcha. Changing okay. the headspace. This affects the headspace. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. We lock it in place. This is the folding portion. Of right, the right, right. So we're in a and typical rifle. You know, this yeah. this hinge part is also doubles as like the barrel nut. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. What he's talking about is the head. Yeah, that's the miracle talking. part of the sub two thousand. It is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The yeah, shoulder yeah. of the round rests on the inside. Yeah. And this affects that. Yeah. And we time the uh, hinge, or the front sight to the hinge, and mount it in the rack like this. And then, uh, yeah. This the Loctite sets up, and fills the void. Uh, we mill it, drill it, and then I put a spring spring pin in place to keep it stationary, keep it from backing off. So. And cool. that is PMR trigger 30? The 2000, sub 2000. Sub 2000. Oh, trigger, yeah. okay. Yeah. Trigger bars and the springs and the triggers. Chad, yeah, PF9. I read it, but we will take a picture. Uh-oh, uh PF9. Oh, oh, boy, look at that. Yeah. 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 I, I put it in That's a lot. How many? Yeah. How many PF9s uh, is that? 80? Maybe? Uh, here, here 101. And here, Bellow. Here, my Bellow. Yeah, so she's doing the, all the uh, PF9 sub assemblies for the uh, obviously sliding barrel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they put. Um, we always end up going backwards over here, but it's okay. Yeah, that's cool. So, what, what they're doing here is um, they're putting in your firing pin and firing pin spring. Uh, your extractor, your extractor spring, this button head screw which kind of holds it all together. Um, the sight and sight screw, the front sight. And obviously they, uh, they drop the barrel in. And then once the barrels are all in, it looks like she's about to put all the recoil guide assemblies in there. And then that gets finalized. They'll check it, um, put them in these bins, and then they go over to final assembly where again, they you know, okay, everything put gets sliding barrels on the lower. You know, build them up, check them out, and send them over to the test fire range. What's the highest number on production out of all the different? Well, I think, uh, Boy said they do 120, uh, 30, she's doing 32s today, I think it was. Oh, 120 okay. a day. So the 32s are the ones you guys make the most of? Or no, no, we make, we, we do them all the same time. Or so is it the, they'll do. I can, me, I can build one day at about, uh, how many laps? Five laps? Well, see, they have to. They, they're like required to build uh, two racks over there or whatever, yeah, like mm -hmm. two racks over there. Mm -hmm. So they have to supply them with enough to kind of keep going. To do, okay. So their, their quota here is much more than what it is over there to sort of okay. to keep production yeah. moving out the door. So another is the machine shop, they build thousands of parts. Mm -hmm. Then they come over here, they build hundreds of parts. They and then over there, down. they get hundred. They're finalizing. Parts. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So yeah, it just kind of, kind of funnels down over, um, into the final assembly and then the range, and, you know, mm -hmm. and then they, they get sent out. So, but uh, yeah, we said she does about 120, 32 a day, so it'd be uh, roughly the same with all the handguns. This is a very tedious job. <laughs> mother of Andrew. This is this is mom of Good Andrew. Mother. Yeah. mother of Andrew. Now, can I take a picture? This is Andrew. Yeah. Andrew. <laughs> He's a legend. <laughs> legendary. The legendary the legend mom of Andrew. Hey, I'm all. Hey, I'm all. So, yeah, I'm a floater. I run the cart. Hi, Hank. <laughs> nice. You got it. Awesome. Thank you. So yeah, I do the card. I take care of all five buildings and then I put them in here. Oh, oh yeah. Whatever they need help, I do. So. 
So what are you injecting in here? Paint. Doing the sides. Oh, you're doing the sides. Yeah, okay. we have to paint every one of the paint. sides. Oh, okay. Yeah, the sides don't come painted. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, all the so that's going the in with a needle. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Basically, the only it's thing tedious. we don't do here is mold plastics. Oh, okay. Everything else we do. I'm, and I mean everything. So. Okay. Yeah. PMR 30 grips. A ton of PMRs right Again, here. they come in as the, the grip half, you know, from the from the molder. It does the molding for us. And then... Yeah. Um, At the left side with the stuff in it. Yep. And there's... Uh, that's got the uh, slide. So you're putting the two halves together, basically, I'm right? Building the trigger and the slide yeah. bar and then put them, stick them together and then yep. paint those and screw it all oh, together. Oh, cool. Yeah. Basically, all the internals for the PMR 30 and the grip. Yeah. So. Sorry. Yeah, so. They have all kinds of colors Very nice. in those too. Got a bunch of PMR 30s here. Oh, that's right. Don't do that right again. All prepped for tomorrow. Good work. Yeah. This is our prep work. Yeah, we have all different. Here, you've got some yeah. different. I keep my rights, my lefts, and if I have any finish, we have all the different colors, the green ones. And there's a burnt bronze oh, one yeah. down there. That's my jam. <laughs> oh, if we have to go get my... I don't like... I don't know, man. I'm going to have to, like... I can see me dual wielding... You're going to have to need one of each, right? Like, yeah, just all the different <laughs> flavors. Yeah, this yeah. is a good example of uh, how they come over from the finishing department. There's no okay. internals in there, so that's what they're doing here. Oh, okay. Uh, same concept with the... Um, the PF9s that, yeah, that you PF9. saw there, so... Yeah. Rear sight. And what's this coated in? These yeah. are blued. Oh, it's blue. blued. Yep. Okay, so this just came out of the bluing process? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, cool. See? And the PF9 have like this. That's been this. Yeah. Okay, so that's the difference. Thank the, you. The yeah, that, that one, poly, poly light, P11. Poly. Oh, the top. The yeah, top low, P11. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. PF9 was made specifically as like a backup, right? For... I carry it every day. I want to go outside. Go this way. He wants to find a hybrid chamber for this. You okay, guy. Chris? This? Yeah. So Dude, we're gonna go into the assembly building now and kind of see where everything gets put together. Nice. Yeah. Lead the way, Chadavis. When I first started here, I was uh, I did uh, I built PF9, so it was my first job here. Oh. And uh, and. <laughs> Andrew and a couple of his buddies used to do the SU-16 rifles and stuff here. And these guys would blare speed metal music and tell jokes at the top of their lungs like all day and had me cracking up. I didn't know anybody here. Mm -hmm. And all, that was my first experience with Keltec was Andrew with his tattoos everywhere, blaring speed metal and like telling Rocking dirty out. jokes at the top of his lungs. Yeah. How'd, you, how'd you wind up over here? At Keltec? Yeah. Um, my... My father used to work out at the Space Center, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll get to meet Rick. He's, Rick is the. Uh, in this. Sorry. That's all right. Uh -huh. Rick's the um, uh, supervisor over here, mm -hmm. and he needed. They needed people, um, and his best friend worked for my dad. Mm -hmm. So he went into work and said, "Hey, Bill, that's my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, you know anybody looking for a job?" And uh, my dad said, "Well, yeah, actually, I do." Get my son out of the house. Yeah. No I'm kidding. The seeing very that boy's <laughs> face. The very next day, Rick called me up and he said, if uh, you want a job, report to Caltech at 8 a.m. and there I am. That's how you do it. Yeah. Do you mind if I take... No, these are, uh, no, 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 these are your um, RFB grip assemblies. And what are these down here? Same thing, same. oh yeah, RFBs. Yep, same, and tan. So you got your OD, the tan, and the black ones. And this is kind of cool because you kind of get, although it is a small sample of them, you get to see... Mm -hmm. The perspective or mm -hmm. um, the ratio of black to tan to green, mm -hmm. and that's sort of how they're ordered. What's the most unique built. one? Well, the, I'm gonna say well, tan, right? Well, that's what I mean. Like these, like you've got all these black ones here, but um, you know, obviously we take orders for other colors and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so this is sort of like gives you a perspective on how many black versus tan and green we do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm liking the green. Yeah, I like the OD green too. Yeah. And this is Brian. He builds, um, you know, like we, like we, I showed you the. Uh, these are RFBs. Yeah, yeah, the RFBs, and these are the sub assemblies, and he builds them up to rifles that are ready to be fired. Right here, are you working on head spacing? No. Yeah, so he's doing head spacing on the uh, barrel right now. 
put the barrel to the receiver and we head space it. Oh, okay. Now, just for people like me that don't know anything, what exactly is head spacing? Head spacing, um, you want to make sure that your chamber depth uh, in relation to the bolt face um, mm -hmm. are in the right spot. Mm -hmm. um, if you have, if it's too loose, you lose a lot of pressure. If it's too tight, then you're going to have issues with extraction. Okay. Um, and also, head spacing is very key for rifles um, in uh, by way of accuracy. Okay. Know, it, it can affect your accuracy as well. It's not okay. properly head spaced. So, yeah. Very important. It's a, it's a very scientific process, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Thanks. Ryan. And the fellas here, we've got, uh, he's working on some PMR 30s. Sub 2000. Got some sub 2000s yeah. going. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, okay, the yeah. sub 2000, right? Yeah. Yeah, for serious. Nice. Yeah, so all you guys that want to take your sub 2000s apart, if you get to this point, <laughs> there's no turning back. Oh, really? <laughs> You're in trouble. Just send it in to us and we'll fix oh. it for you. No, because, yeah. yeah, a lot of guys take them apart. And there are some very competent people out there that, okay. that are so good. So if at I do it, wind up taking it apart, it's okay to. Well, just no. give me a call and I'll walk oh. you through it. I'll put it back together. Thanks, bro. No, I'm not that brave to take it to take it down that far. Yeah. Use your barrel, your sub-assembly barrel. Are these all different calibers right now, or the same these caliber? These are the nines. Those, those are 40s. Are they 40s? Are 40s? That's yeah. a 22. Same thing. Those are 23s. Okay. Oh, okay. Block 22 and block 23 over here. Showing the difference. Shortage to the regular. Oh yeah. So these are your Glock variants. Oh, you got okay. The, sh the short one and the long one. Okay. Actually, let's do that. Yeah. So. So now, if I get it, like I have a Glock 17 version, do I need to just trim this down in order to make it take my 19 magazines? You can, but um, yeah. what do I lose, avoid my? What you'll lose is yeah, you will, because yeah. this is considered part of the receiver. Okay. Um, but so don't do it. Don't just yeah. Yeah, well, just get a bunch of Glock 17 magazines, okay? <laughs> they'll they'll trim it down a lot of guys, and they'll lose this spacer here, oh. and so they don't have anything to kind of hold that that oh. bottom piece together. So. Okay. Yeah. So everyone who's out there doing that, stop right now. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, it's your choice, but yeah, you, yeah you'll lose. You avoid the warranty. Oh, okay. Pretty cool. Very nice. Yeah. So these are. Uh, Built and ready to go down. We'll take it down to the range. You can see. Oh, okay. This is Oi. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Oh, she's what are you building, Oi? P32s. Yes. P32s. Building some P32s today. Koi, do you build the same thing every day, or do you change? Yeah, nope. Uh, we. I build a pistol. I build PF9 and P11 and P32 and P33. Okay. So, so all the pistols. Yeah. So we both do pistol. So oh, okay. that's my partner. Oh, okay, yeah. very nice. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. They are the ones that How much time out. did it take you to learn how to build all these oh, things day by depends. day? Because it changes, right? But, yeah, like P32, we have to build one to 50 a day. The, or from the frame, from the frame to the put in the grip and put the slide on, that's 160 a day. We have to do it. That's my quarter. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Okay. Got like paper in there. Yeah, there's no. All right. There's your, there's your future KSG for all the people who say that they can't find any KSGs. How many KSGs is this right here? What is it, 20 on the rack? Yeah. yeah, so there's 40 here, but... Uh, the rest of them are probably in the range being test fired yeah. right now. That's about 40 PSGs being ready to go out to you guys. What are you building here? I'm doing PF9. PF9. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're on a positive. Yeah. So this would be that plate that we saw. Yeah, the multi-plate. What are you guys calling this gray? I don't know. Do you know what this these is? Are, these are charcoal. charcoal. Charcoal, okay. Yeah, it looks there good. There is a tungsten. It's a little bit darker. Tungsten's oh, there darker. is. The okay. Tungsten. Okay, so this is charcoal. Oh, oh this color. this looks like the tungsten. No, those are black. Oh, these are black. Yeah, black okay. Yeah. Because the tungsten is like a, a silvery gray, right? Yeah, it's just a little bit darker than this. This is more of a silver. Okay. Yeah. 
more okay. of a darker color in it. Right. It's great that you guys yeah. can come and visit our facility. Oh, oh this is fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can show all the options. I mean, this, this is also nice for now. This is the one you said that's... The tungsten. The tungsten. That's new, right? Yes, that's a newer color. We got tungsten in... Do you in, have uh, a tungsten that's finished? The complete I don't band? believe we have any grips okay. or uh, top covers, enough top oh, covers okay. to do them. So what are the new colors? These are the two or newer colors that we have. Red bronze. And then the tungsten. tungsten. These are, um, there's only one distributor that, that we send the burnt bronze ones to. They have the rights to the color, mm -hmm. believe it or not. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they go out through one, only one distributor as opposed to the, we okay. have 30, so 29 okay. other ones can send the gonna, other color except for burnt bronze. Are we going to get all these flavors in the RMR? Well, yeah, all the polymer bits and pieces okay. we can do. You can do any gun Sarah could have, mm -hmm. like, you'll see in my PMR 30, um, mm -hmm. I have actually, the slide is also... Cerakote, so it's Cerakote. all one color. Mm -hmm. I Cerakoted the the uh, slide stop, mm -hmm. um, the trigger, the mag release, and also the uh, safety levers. Oh, okay. So it's all one color. We've got some KSG assembly going on here. Yeah. Good, sir. Oh. All right. Working hard. Absolutely. Working for a little. Yeah, so, uh -oh. it's one of the guys that puts all the guns, the KSGs together. Very nice. Yeah. Check that out. Oh. What color is this? This is the this is the tungsten. That's the tungsten. Oh yes, yeah. Sir. We uh we offer it in burnt bronze, tungsten, tan, green, and black. Wow, nice. Okay. Somebody's gonna have to get a couple more. Yeah, I'm kinda. That's the whole idea. Yeah. Trying to build as many as I can. <laughs> Thanks for doing it, man. Absolutely. There's people out there. Waiting on these things. So. Absolutely, and that's that's great. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, if you guys have any questions, just ask. How long is now? You're doing the complete assembly here. Um, I get it in a couple of pieces. I get mm -hmm. my barrel assembly. I get my receivers. Mm -hmm. um, I have I have my uh, butt stocks, mm -hmm. and I have my grip assemblies. Now these everything basically comes pre-assembled. Mm -hmm. um, I just have to take the the you know four or five pieces and just. Put it all stick together. it together and I mean it works. Okay. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm taking my barrel and my, my barrel assembly and my receiver and I'm making them together. Mm -hmm. um, and this is basically this fits over your, uh, your receiver fits over your barrel assembly and then once you get all that together you take it over to this nifty little machine right here and it tightens it down. Maybe. There we go. And right here. Maybe. Let's together. And all you do is fit this in here. Slip it from there. Take your butt stock. Slips right on just like that. And you take your grip assembly, make sure it works properly, everything functions, your safety, your release, everything like that. Take it, make sure it's together. This, you want to pop this hole to, uh, to make sure that this little assembly pin right here, thank you sir, can, uh, can go through there. Now there's two assembly pins. And this, the, the reason that it's like this is for ease of disassembling, yeah. if you need to disassemble it for any reason. Right. Um, it's, it's really easy to take apart. Mm -hmm. And that's... That's it. That's it. I mean, that's five parts and it's it's together. Right. I mean, it's a really simple gun to put together. Well done. <sighs> yes, sir. And how many, what do you have on this rack here? Um, you got... There's 20 on, on each right. one of these mm -hmm. racks and there's 120 on each one of these. Mm -hmm. And um, we get, you know, different uh, 50, 40 grips in a box, stuff like that. So on average, how many of these are you putting together every day? Um, about 150. Oh, okay. Somewhere around there, give or take a few, depending on how many mm -hmm. problems we have. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, we put out as many as we can, you know. Uh, obviously, there's, you know, little things that go wrong, kind of right. slow you down a little bit, but I mean, we put out as many as we possibly can. Okay. Cool. Yes, sir. Very nice. Thank you. You're very welcome. Y'all have a wonderful day. You too.
And this is what happens to him if he doesn't put out money. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rick. He, he's hey, Rick. Uh, one, of, going, man? one of George's, if not George's, uh, oldest employees, aren't you? Yeah. He's been here since the beginning. Oh, okay. So, knows uh, more about firearms than anybody I've ever met. <laughs> not just our firearms, but any How many Smackdowns have you had to put on chat? <laughs> no, he's all right. Not I got a really okay. funny, real quick story, though. When I first got hired here, um, he had me putting together the PF9s, like I mentioned, and uh, I was like go-getter, wanted to make him proud of me, so mm -hmm. I built all these guns up, and they come in a rack of 80. I got them all together, I'm like, yes, I'm gonna impress the boss, right? He walks over, he's like, you got a problem. Mm -hmm. You put all the trigger springs in backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so he actually sat down with me, we pulled them all apart and fixed them and, and got them going, but yeah, I was like, man. You've been doing all right since then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Being one of the oldest employees, what can you tell us about the transition you've seen Caltech go through over the years? Uh, we started out in something smaller than a house and increased to the size we are today and are enlarging. Well, every day it seems like they're buying new property and they're doing something else. Yeah. Yeah. And we're ISO certified now too, which is a big, yeah. big deal. So. It's a lot of expansion over what? What are we talking about? 20 years? Yeah, I mean, George. For uh, Caltech, I was an employee of this back in the Grendel days, many, many oh. years ago. Oh wow! Um, yeah. That's some serious follow, history there. Yeah. Followed him very nice. For a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. So he's got some. Yeah. He's got some very loyal employees. Good, great employees. So. That's a good guy to work with. SU-16s, PLR-22s, and uh, SU-22s. And I know you've got lots of different variations of the SU-16, so you've got what, A2, what, Z? <laughs> we have the A, B, C, C, A, E, and D models. The D right. are the uh, Class 3 SBRs. Okay. Right, okay. Now those people can order through their FFL directly from you guys, right? The Class yeah. 3 or no? Yeah, you have to order through a Class 3 dealer. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you've got a special California one. Is that what the CA is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. California and Canada. Oh, okay. We can't leave our friends out, you know. Oh, Even though they live in a, a terrible yeah. state. <laughs> Just hey. kidding, California. I love you guys. Those guys holding out in California still need guns, too. That's right, exactly. Yeah. They're our final stand out there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we're just, we're just waiting at this point. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks so Thank you. We will. You too. Take care. This used to be my office, and then he kicked me out, and now he does This is actually bigger <laughs> what you've got. So they demoted you. Well, see, now Andrew and you I... You guys got rid of him, right? We, we tried, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> how you see, all today? Good, how are you? All right. Andrew and I had a really big office next door. They mm -hmm. kicked us out of there, and they put both of us in here. Mm -hmm. This is when I was working, being a rifle tech with Andrew. Oh, okay. And then we both moved over there, and I got the little office, mm -hmm. um, which I'm very cool with, because I like mm -hmm. that cozy mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, Andrew has his uh, his new workstation over there, which is actually <laughs> smaller too. So. Oh, okay. Did we pass <laughs> Andrew's workstation? I know he's not we here. Have, yeah, he's not here today, but we yeah. haven't we didn't go into the repair department yet. So. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. walk down through the range. Thanks for uh, letting us invade your space for a minute. All right. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so we'll uh, head through here. All right, you too. Yeah. So in here we do... Um, this is where, like, uh, well, these machines here, they, when they build the SU-16s, um, they need a, uh, uh, an ATF hole drilled in it. There's like mm -hmm. some kind of laws and stuff you gotta follow, so we do mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff here. If we need to do any sanding, um, mm -hmm. uh, we do some routing over there on the, on the SU-16 okay. as well. And Mark does all that. He's, he's the... Uh, He's in charge of the serial numbers, like he's the guy oh. that, that stamps everything. This is his office here. Oh, okay. He's always on lockdown, so we don't... Oh, this, this, is the, this is the top secret area. He's one of them, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So we'll head down here. The guns, the racks go in there. They build the guns, they put them on the racks, and then, as you can see behind you, they roll them down here to the range. This used to be a 100-yard range, by the way. Mm -hmm. So they cut it down to 50 and to make space for this, so that's why you see all the little... Are these boxes that are going out? Bullet dings on the floor. Uh, they pre they pre build the boxes for the guns, and oh, when okay. we go through the shipping, I'll show you how they, they box them up and send them out. Recognize that? Yeah, these are RFBs. Yeah. So here's our range. Which is pretty neat airs. 
pretty quiet today. No, they, okay. It's it's. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, nice, man. We got to bring some guns in here. Well, we have another range we're going to. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so how long is this down here? It's 55 yards now. 55? Okay. Yeah. But as you can see on the walls here, so for you viewers out there that are getting paranoid that we're shooting the walls right here, <laughs> this is from when the range was 100 yards. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, it used to stretch all the way back. So. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so this is, how many ranges do you guys have? Just two. One, two? two. We've got two, yeah. We have one. This is the original, um, and then we've got the 25-yard range over in where I work. Oh, okay. In cool. my building. Yeah. All right. So. so we'll shoot some guns over. Yeah. All right. Okay. So they come in here. The guys load them up. So yeah, when? So how many rounds do you guys put through? When you've done building a gun, how many rounds do you put through it? It depends on the gun. Can... Some get more than others. Okay. Um, but all the rifles get proof tested, and the P11 and uh, PF9 get proof tested. Uh, the 380s get like a half mag through it. Um, what else we got? Oh, the KSGs get proof tested as well. Um, yeah. So. Cool. Thank you. So then they come in here. All those boxes that are so built, they uh, these are the people that utilize them. Oh, okay. And this is Miss Hello. She's my first boss. Yeah. How are you doing? Still my favorite. Aww. <laughs> so sweet. Right? Yes, he is. So these are all firearms that are getting boxed up. And uh, it's these are all getting ready to get shipped out. So yes. next up here is the FedEx UPS guy. And then, the, and then you this store. is Robert. He's the. What kind of gun is that? I've never seen one of those. You've never seen this one? <laughs> uh, this is Robert. He's our supervisor here in the, in the uh, shipping department. How you doing, Robert? In, he literally was standing here when Caltech was built, so they built the company around him. <laughs> it used to be dirt. Oh, okay. And then there was a desk. And then yeah. there was Robert. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's I how long he's been here. I answer an ad in the newspaper. That's back when they had ads in the newspaper. It was machine operators and assemblers, 350 an hour to start. And I was, I think I was 20 years old, and now I'm 46. Now you're 80 wow. something, right? <clears throat> I love it here. You look good for being 102, doesn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to work. Yeah. So, it was Kevin Butler, Rick, and you were basically George's first three employees, kind of? Yeah, I mean, back then Kevin wasn't the foreman. His brother used to work here, and he was the okay. foreman. And Kevin was just the mold maker. Gotcha. And uh, I think there was probably at least five employees when I started, and now there's like 210. Wow. Yeah, now you got a little history. Yeah. But yeah, we just used to make flashlights and knives. And now we make flashlights and guns. These he, cool guns. He's the last person to see the firearms before they okay. go out the door and they get Yeah, to yeah, I have to make sure that, you know, they look good. You're inspector the... number 11 or whatever that is, like on the underwear? <laughs> I don't really have a number, but... Uh, Let me tell you a little story about, uh, about him. Uh, when I used to work in the range here, I was the guy that did all the test firing, mm -hmm. and um, well, one of the guys. And so we, you know, put the guns back on the rack when we we're finished test firing and bring him over here. He was constantly coming back over there, going, "This one has a scratch on it. This one's got a whatever." I mean, he's like the most meticulous guy I've ever met wow. in my life. He used to drive me crazy. <laughs> he always gets to play with the nice so There's, guns. These yeah, are all guns to. going out today. The, how many are in these boxes? Well, those are only five shotguns in each box. Yeah. So, so this okay. is going from here to distributors, right? Yeah. yeah somewhere okay. in the United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Here's and some going from to the Tennessee. Distributors Here's to some your going to Texas. Gun store. You know, we have distributors all over the country, right. and then they ship to, they ship to the local gun stores in their neighborhoods mm -hmm. or, or or somewhere else in the country. Like that pile of guns, you know, there might, there's only 40 guns, 40 shotguns right here, and that's one order, mm -hmm. you know, but um, and then it's still a lot of work. On there, mm -hmm. and then you've got this room over here that's completely full. Oh, okay. Yeah, we ship out thousands and thousands of them, and 
never seems to be enough. No, it's not enough for the end users, no. Or the, you know, necessarily for the boss either, right? Yeah. He's there always you, go. you heard it from the guy that ships them thousands yeah. and thousands of them. And yeah. yeah. But oh, the yeah. guy, but the guys waiting for their Caltex is never enough, man. I know, but no. there's a hum, hundreds yeah. of millions of people out there. It's yeah. hard to provide. Everybody. Which we appreciate. Yeah. Appreciate. Everyone in America should have a couple of Caltex. I think I've got like, what, yeah, 10? I think it'll happen eventually. I think, yeah. yeah. I think they should have a, one of each at least. Yeah, absolutely. They should hang strange it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Enjoy a lot, your man. tour. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Chad has just toured us around the Caltech facilities, and it's pretty expansive. There's a couple buildings. How many buildings do you there's, guys have? There's a few. Uh, operational right now, we have one, two, three, four, five five buildings including our offices right yeah but each building is is uh, you know so there's separations in each building there's different departments in each building so right so yeah. where do we start out uh, we started out in what's called Brevard Robotics North mm -hmm. uh, which is the building we're in right now mm -hmm. and uh, this is where all of our warehousing is where all of our steel comes in to be delivered you know all the raw materials come right in here um, one place we didn't go um, right above my office here is our um, accessories department, mm -hmm. um, but not the most exciting thing in the world. And I'm mm -hmm. not sure if the girls up there want to be on camera, <laughs> but uh, it, they they have an office up there as well mm -hmm. where like uh, when you order accessories online or when mm -hmm. you call in to order stuff, they take care of that and they get it sent oh, out okay. for you. And then our repair department. Um, I would love to take you guys through the repair department, but there's just too much. There's too much sensitive information mm -hmm. around to be mm -hmm. thrown up, you know, on Facebook mm -hmm. and stuff, or YouTube or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, lots of serial numbers and paperwork mm -hmm. and things of that nature, and we can't people's like, personal information, right, exactly. which we don't want to expose. Anymore. Right, sure, mm -hmm. of course. There's a there's a bunch of elves in there doing mm -hmm. you know doing their thing to get the repairs out and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, so all the the repairs are magically done by someone. Yes. We didn't see that. Well, you it's met just magic. You saw <laughs> no. well, a couple of them saw walking through the hallway after their break. But yeah, met, uh, I think you met Doug. Mm -hmm. but I don't know if we got Doug on camera. Right. But he's the handgun guy I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. the handgun repair tech. So what's so, the process like? If you guys are building something, we started out at raw materials. So then from raw materials, where does that? Where does it go next? Well, it depends on the material, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but everything starts in here. Mm -hmm. um, some of the materials are partially prepped here, like in other words, a barrel stock is cut down mm -hmm. um, here, and then all that stuff goes over into the, the very next building that we went across the metal bridge, and then uh, not the far metal bridge, mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, green one to get over to the Caltech building. Okay. But there's another robotics building right here, so you mm -hmm. walk across over there where we met Carl. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a some bunch of, of CNC machines. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. So some of the materials go there, but most of them go over into the main building where all the CNC machines are. All right. So what did we agree on the at, like rough estimate of uh, how many CNC machines you guys have? Like 50, 50 something machines. Yes, yeah, I don't know exactly, but something yeah. like that. Yeah. So you're getting in. You want to just explain to us quickly what's going? Because I know Caltech is upgrading. Um, you're going up to a different standard. Mm -hmm. of measurement that that would be the what is that ASO yeah. ISO ISO, yeah, ISO standards, so you, yeah. do you want to just explain to folks what that is because I know you're sure. still in the process of bringing in machines and yeah well ISO up. certification we got we actually got that uh, uh, last October and uh, which is a really really big deal it's a very expensive program and what mm -hmm. it does is it starts from the top all the way down all the way through the process all the way into the customer's hand right so, or final product that's going to end up in the customer's mm -hmm. hands. So, and what that means is um, it's kind of like a, a regulatory process. Um, they make sure that everything we're doing is by the book. Right. Um, and that includes paperwork. I mean, that includes labeling things. Like you can see here, I have for reference only on this mm -hmm. board. That's an ISO requirement. And within that, when it comes to parts, um, things of that nature, when they're building stuff mm -hmm. from raw materials, even the raw materials when they come in mm -hmm. have to be checked. Mm -hmm. Everything's got to be labeled properly, and it has to be the actual material that we ordered. Um, they they do testing for that. Um, and so the quality control department has to check everything with. I mean, they they got calipers and scopes and all kinds of little things. And that's another building that we can't really go into mm -hmm. right now because I think there's some prototype stuff right. in there we can't see. But mm -hmm. yeah, so they're in there checking all these uh, parts. And um, everything has to be to spec, and if it's not, then it gets recycled uh, okay. as scrap. So, so far as the end user, which is who I'm mostly, who my audience is, the guys who are actually buying the guns at the end, mm -hmm. are they going to see some kind of substantial difference because of this? We're already seeing it. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
for anybody out there that's got really old Caltech weapons or whatever, mm -hmm. you may notice now different, obviously the Cerakoting, mm -hmm. um, and then the quality of the Parkerizing and the bluing has gone way, way up. It's at a, it's at the ISO standard now, mm -hmm. um, which is a standardization for any any major corporation, any major company mm -hmm. um, that needs things done by the book so everything is consistent and mm -hmm. done properly. Um, you're, you'll be seeing that it, just in the finishes alone. Okay, so the thing I want to ask you is, obviously we can't run from the fact that there are people that buy kel guns and they have issues. Sure. Is there something that you want to say to those guys that do have issues? It happens. It happens in a lot of different companies. I'm always buying guns mm -hmm. and, you know, these are mechanical things. Sure. Things happen with them. So happens, what do you want to say about it that? It happens to every company. And, you know, when people buy it, Pick a firearm company, mm -hmm. you know, there's people that hate this gun or they hate that gun or they hate this manufacturer or that one. And the thing is, it's just not necessary to have that sort of an attitude, especially with kel because mm -hmm. if you have an issue with the firearm, we'll fix it for you. We'll yeah. get it, you know, we'll get it figured out for you and yeah. we're more than willing to work with you. I mean, you're mm -hmm. our customer, you yeah. know, and we appreciate that. I mean, if it weren't for customers, we wouldn't be here. And like yeah. I said, George would be off doing something else and we'd all be looking for a job. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, customers are are key to to any business. You know, we don't have giant military contracts and things of that mm -hmm. nature where we're just locked in for millions of dollars and mm -hmm. stuff. So, you know, and even if we were, you know, our customers come first no matter okay. what. So, so how do you suggest guys get in touch with you to deal with problems? I know you've got. I know when the phones ring, it rings here. It doesn't ring in India or right. any other yeah. place. It rings right here. You answer the phone sometimes. Are all the guys here? Yeah, and everyone that answers the phone here in customer service are. Uh, their techs. Mm -hmm. So they've been through this whole process that we just walked through, mm -hmm. uh, minus the machine shop, mm -hmm. like the assembly department and all that stuff. That's where they all come from. And then they move over to the repair department and mm -hmm. then they end up on the phone. So when you call, okay. they know what they're talking about. You're not right. talking to somebody that's reading off a sheet, you know, yeah. telling you what you want to hear. Yeah. It's an so, actual So tech. someone's issue might be just actually getting through on the phone. So what do you say? Is it better to email or just keep trying to call or... Uh, what, you know, email, phone, however you can get it, faxes yeah. if you need to. But whatever it's going to yeah. take a little bit because it's a limited <clears throat> amount of people. You don't, you don't farm that out to another company. Right, right, right. Yeah. And I'm sure some people wish that we did, but yeah. then again, you're not going to get someone on the other end of the line that knows your firearm inside now and can mm -hmm. help you with it over the phone. Yeah. Yeah. So. Just give a little bit of patience. <laughs> yeah, and we do apologize. It, and, and again, it, it's. It's a testimony to the, the growth of the company. Yeah. You know, we, we've we never taken this many phone calls and emails mm -hmm. and stuff. And and uh, it's not always problems, by the way. I mean, mm -hmm. um, half our day is people calling in either buying accessories or right. saying, hey, some people call just to say, hey, I love your products. Can I talk to George? Yeah. <laughs> or whatever, you know? Yeah, uh, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's not, it's not all negative, you know. Mm -hmm. we, get, we, we have amazing customers, and, and we'll do everything we can for those, those of those, you know, the guys out there that are unhappy with, mm -hmm. with their, with their Celtic. We'll take care of you, you know. And yeah. That's what we're here for. All right, so. great. Thanks. Did, was there yeah. anything else you wanted to add? No. No, I just appreciate okay. you guys coming out. Yeah, thanks a lot for having us. Man. Yeah, of course. We appreciate you guys. I think this is probably, like, the first guys. I don't know why they allowed me in here. I don't Persistence. think they know what they were getting into. Yeah, I just kept torturing Chad and, you know, harassing him at SHOT Show. And he finally gave in. So I am literally chained to my chair yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is a big deal. I'm, I'm really happy. Lola and I are really happy that for our channel, Chad and Keltec, you know, Derek, George, everyone was really cool with us and very open. And, you know, we loved it. This was awesome. I'm really looking forward to actually getting this out there and letting you guys see it. So... Thanks for watching. Remember what I say, like, share, subscribe. Check out Chad, he's all over the place. You can hunt him down on all the social medias and Caltech. You know, you know what I do here, right Chad? Strange Nation. Peace, Peace out. out. <laughs> Respect it! <laughs>